All right, Jamie, this is a fucking shit show, but we're just gonna like muscle through it. Okay, so right now, this is how we're gonna do it. We have three different vlogs for you. You can click my face for the first vlog. You can click Don's face for the third vlog. And in this space in the middle, you can click for our second vlog. Uh, I don't know which each of these vlogs are, so I'm gonna cut this part out right now. Lit! Okay. Our first thing we're going to talk about today is, Don, would you like to say our topic? U.S. nears a $100 billion arms deal with Saudi Arabia. So, what does this mean for us? So, Saudi Arabia is a, well, I don't know if I would say a long-term ally with the United States, but they've been allied with us for as long as, you know, modern times uh, exactly because of oil because of uh you know interests in the middle east and a bunch of conflicts it can be kind of complicated but to put simply this one topic covers the uh, uh 100 billion dollar arms deal which is a big deal because we're already in uh like a 20 trillion dollar debt that's Jeez. been passed on by like you know multiple administrations Fun fact, Saudi Arabia is actually competing to be our number one ally in the Middle East, second only to... Israel? Israel. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so both uh, very big on defense and defense spending. Um, both countries rely heavily on the United States, uh, you know, money and and uh, and business. Uh, Israel kind of does that too when it comes to, like, the defense spending part and us helping them with, like, their money for their... Uh, armies and, and military and all that and then Saudi Arabia um, mainly there's a big oil deal obviously and it, it's kind of concerning on an ethical standpoint because Saudi Arabia has a bunch of pro social problems that would normally uh, be a uh, very concerning for the American people uh, maybe not the you know the American government but Saudi Arabia has very strict laws that would be considered uh, sexist or or homophobic um, but so. like like Donald said before, we just have to suffer through all of this because oil and all that stuff is such a huge necessity for the United States to function as a whole. Uh, I believe we consume about like uh, 16 million gallons of oil a Easy, year, easily, and we yeah. produce about six of those. Right. So. Right, and and it, it also brings in the fact that. Uh, like domestic problems as well, like the pipeline business exactly. going on. And we got to say, you know, like, do, do we, you know, we either have these pipelines or we have, to, you know, there's two like lesser evils that we had to pick. Is, exactly. You know, it, it really sucks as a situation. Um, what do you think? How could we like solve our relationship with these countries? I think that what we should really do is we should develop better relationships with neutral countries that have oil, like Maybe not neutral, but Brazil just struck a lot of oil. Yeah, recently. I heard about that. Read and about I think, you know, they have a bunch of, you know, government problems as well and some administration. But at the very least, as far as a social standpoint, as far as, uh, you know, conflicts are concerned, it's not the Middle East. Uh, I think that there would be good to, it would be good to have some business deals with other countries like them. Might help. But, uh, so this is a little, might be a little bit off topic, but why shouldn't we relate? Even though they're, yes, they're culturally different than us. Isn't uh, America's like ideal to, you know, be tolerant of other people's cultures and everything? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, I, I agree. Uh, if we're talking from that standpoint, I think we can say that, that we should be as neutral as possible. Unfortunately, we're very interventionalist. Exactly. Like, uh, we have our, our military, uh, all of our branches are spread across the world in over a hundred different countries, uh, training other militaries, uh, acting as, as militaries for other countries. And that cuts deeply into our defense spending and our overall budget, which has been a uh, yeah, ma about... major thing to our uh, debt. About like forty percent of our budget goes into our military. Yeah, at least. It's and crazy. I mean, you, uh, this is off topic a little bit, but related to the military part, just uh, within a decade, we spent a trillion dollars on a single jet program, the F thirty five Lightning. Yo, those are cool though. They're cool. <laughs> they're, they're cool jets. I, I like them, but like, I mean, a, a, tr a trillion dollars—that's that's one twentieth of our debt. 
Uh, it's that insane. It, you know, it, it, it really is insane. So, um, so going back to other topic, the the point of this deal was to help Saudi Arabia to deal with the threats of ISIS and stuff like that, and to continue Bush's war on terror. So, uh, personally, like this is backtracking now, but like we were we were talking about like how could we get less involved with these countries like Saudi Arabia and stuff like that and not my my solution to that is renewable energy but like that's a dream looking like renewable so en energy and abolishing the CIA not no oh, yes per no, perfect I mean the CIA didn't create these pro I mean like all the way back from however long ago the first one I could just think off the top of my head is like uh, Vietnam being a disaster with the CIA trying to put in a democratic head of state I mean we just shouldn't deal with it if, if they're gonna be if, if they don't we should just mine our own fucking business we should just mine our own business yeah case closed since 1945 we've become the policeman of the world no one likes the police look at that what's that quote fuck the police all right and i think that's gonna have to do it all for our vlog on uh news in the world that you didn't know about and jamie tell us what you think let us know in the comment section down below now, uh, we're just going to leave a little bit of a buffer here for our next video. So. Okay. Um, tell us, James. Uh, that's a double stack. How's your day going? One. Yo, breaking news. Breaking fucking news. This is shit that you need to know. I'm here at The No. No. <laughs> I'm here with my co-host, Donald. What's up? Now, today, we're going to talk about something that's really serious. Don. Do you know your 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 Fourth Amendment right to your Eighth Amendment right? Yeah, yeah. What are they? So Fourth Amendment, uh, well, Fourth Amendment has to do with the uh, right to the, privacy, the, the right to privacy, and you know the searches of seizure seizures and whatnot of property, speedy trial of your speedy peers. trial, you exactly. Can't, no, no double jeopardy. Exactly. Whatever. Yeah. You so know, all that stuff. What happens though when? money starts influencing those rights corruption uh uh it's just fucked up it just, it, yeah, yeah it's just fucked up corruption so yeah. we just found out Injustice something is, you know terrible yeah. we just found out something terrible louisiana due to some funding issues and such that we just found out just announced that they can't afford to pay public defenders anymore. So people who usually don't have enough money to afford a lawyer now have to plead guilty rather than represent themselves and then not be able to get a mistrial. That's, to me, disgusting. It is. I mean, it's written into law both by constitution and by uh, preceding laws and bills. No, everyone should have the right to an attorney. Uh, so it makes no sense that there's no budget for that and that they would skimp over that um, You think something that a little less uh, Serious would be cut in the budget and someone would know what they're doing as far as uh, The right way to to manage that budget and to balance it. Uh, it's kind of it's it's not just disgusting on, on an ethical level, but it's also just uh, it, It's very irresponsible uh, I mean that's their job. They're supposed to balance the books, right? They're supposed to, uh, regardless, regardless of that, you know, if they go into debt for it, it should still be in, uh, it, it should still be in place. They, they can't just get rid of that. So I now, don't understand. allegedly, when you're arrested, I wouldn't know. Never been arrested. Eh, me either. Uh, an officer, when they arrest you, they tell you a couple of things, right? They give you your Miranda rights? Your Miranda rights, exactly. The Miranda rights came from, uh, uh, I think, something versus Miranda in uh, uh, about 1957-ish? It was a state, I think. Yeah. It makes oh, sense. Arizona versus Ari Miranda. Yeah. Okay, so it was that thing. They tell you, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. And finally, you have the right to an attorney. And if you cannot afford said attorney, one will be provided for you. If if one isn't provided for them, are these arrests now legal? That's a good point. Uh, there's been cases where simply taking evidence that wasn't properly seized with a, with a warrant 
has nullified a court case and made it so that the person, you know, can can go free, regardless of whether or not they're in, uh, innocent. So you'd think that the similar a similar thing would happen with there being no attorney. They would either push it for a later date until they can find a person with an attorney, or let them go depending on how serious the offense is. Uh, it brings up a lot of questions. It really does. Uh, this is our uh, submission for um, the open eyes assignment. We believe that this... I have never seen this in the news. Have you? No. See, this is one of those many things that gets glossed over and no one Due really cares Trump's about. Due to Trump's new America agenda. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Anyways, a lot of other things get great attention, but this is this is something that's infringing on our rights, what our soldiers are fighting and dying for, you know? Things that we vote for and... How how can something like that happen in our own country? You know? Yeah, it that's, seems it's it seems foreign. It, it's not okay. So that's our assignment for our open eyes. Uh, uh, open eyes assignment. Um, let us know what you think, Jamie. Now we're gonna leave another buffer for our, our uh, final one, which is uh, in the trenches. All of this is going to be video. I have to come shit. When the clutch, when you think we crush anything that goes down, gotta deal with us if we ain't feeling. So, if one thing hasn't fucking changed, is that Don fucking loves guns. Right, Don? I do. Uh, I won't. Ed, I won't uh, dismiss that I do have sort of a bias, but uh, when it does come to the facts and statistics, uh, I don't uh, look past those things. Those things are important. Those things are, they're facts. So get right into it. There was a discuss comment on a gun control related article from Rolling Stone, which was for- Now, now, I'm sorry to cut you off, Don, but sure. let's, let's just make this clear. We're, me and Don are on opposite sides of the argument. He's obviously pro-gun, and I'm very more for uh, gun control. We'll get into that later, but first we're going to talk about what uh, this article. Sure. So the article was pro four pro-gun arguments we're sick of hearing, and in my personal opinion, I thought the article lacked uh, an, Im an immense amount of substance. It was pretty bad. Uh, it was, uh, number one, guns don't kill people, people kill people. Two, the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. Uh, three, but mental health. And four, Second Amendment, baby. Um, and if we just went through them quick, in my personal opinion, the guns don't kill people, people kill people. Uh, I, I, I hate hearing that too. I think it's just dumb that people say all of these things just the way they are quoted without giving... Uh, there's much better retorts you can give besides these... Uh, Why don't you give us some of them? So, well, I wrote them right here. If we bring up the comment on the screen to these is... Uh, not true gun murder rates have actually stayed pretty steady. You should be able to see the clip right there on the screen It's uh, by a user named Stephanie and I basically went uh, and posted the statistics using uh, our very undercover name So no one can know who we are Don Willis hashtag anonymous um, uh, Gun murder rates have actually cut in half. Uh, that's actually very generous. They have actually cut more, uh, 65%, oh. uh, since 1993, according to FBI statistics and numerous other statistics. Uh, so they're, they're, you know, reliable. This isn't, you know, Breitbart or some shit. Uh, and this is not due to gun control, uh, simply put because, uh, f very, uh, plain statistics that, uh, gun ownership has actually increased like tenfold. And also the uh, the Aubi and all these other uh, you know laws uh, have either sunsetted or aren't in place in in the locations where there is strict gun control. So it, it doesn't really uh, make sense. Uh, I included those things, and I've also uh, said that 52% uh, of the gun related murders are committed in 2% of America's counties, of which these counties are located in states with the sh or cities with the strictest gun control. So it has no correlation. Um, and unfortunately, Stephanie uh, never got back to us because the comment was from a year ago. Uh, but we waited a few hours and uh, nothing came of that. But uh, uh, what, what do you think? What do you think? Let's say you're Stephanie and you were to comment back to me. What would you say? See, well, as a anti-gun guy myself, right? Now, personally, I've never fired a gun or anything. Uh, it never had to been in a situation. God bless. Knock on wood. But, um... 
you know, for me personally, I, I won't say I won't fight the statistics. You're you're right. Gun gun rates and murders or everything haven't increased or anything, but like if you look at these fucked up situations, uh, the school shootings, uh, the the mass shootings, these are messed up situations done by messed up people. I'm not saying it's the gun's fault either or anything. However, like. Do we really need a freaking cannon? A hand cannon? You know? Does someone well, really a, need an AK-47 great... to, like, make his dick feel... Oh my no, god, I can't say that. <laughs> okay. See, that's a great question, and that devolved into the name-calling, which is so common, like the dick size thing, you know, which, again, is just as bad as uh, the Rolling Stone article here puts into perspective with the lack of substance. Uh, it, what's great is, it, you know, you have these opinions, which is okay, it's fine to have opinions, but are you familiar with uh, the the stats or that the or the laws that the ATF put in place? Are you familiar with New York gun laws? Are you familiar with the federal gun laws? Uh, do you know what is already in place as far as gun control? And if you say no to one or more of those, then I can't. I'm not going to say you can't have an opinion, but it might not be taken very seriously. Well, in fact, Donald. I do know these laws and everything. You know why? Okay, well, uh, what was the major gun control law passed in New York in 2013? Uh, no extended magazines. You're, you can only hold 10 shots, I believe, in a pistol, and uh, rifles can only be semi-automatic. And uh, Not exactly. Uh, the 10-round limit existed pre before the SAFE Act, and... Uh, it didn't really do much to curb any sort of uh, high capacity or standard capacity magazine uh, use by criminals. Uh, and there was a grandfathering of, of magazines higher than 10 rounds, and uh, none of those were used in uh, crimes from, uh, from pre-1996 uh, uh, magazines. So that's wrong. But, uh, and as far as semi-automatics, they're still legal um, just without features. The, the, in 2013, the SAFE Act passed, and the SAFE Act... Uh, I actually don't know these laws, but we're just doing this for the sake of argument. Yep. And so, it, basically, it banned any features off of rifle that were considered evil or scary, such as pistol grip, uh, muzzle devices, telescoping stocks, and whatnot, which uh, there is no reliable information that says that this stuff makes the rifle more deadly and if the function is still there. Well, it, it just again, didn't... Donald, I won't argue... It, I won't argue it with you in any of these statistics or anything because I'll admit you have me beat. But the fact remains, the need part. Let me let me get to that. So this would go under the the one that says Second Amendment, baby. Here's so, a here's a good time to remind everyone that the Second Amendment was written by slaveholders before we had electricity, much less kind of weaponry that would be murderers can buy today. Sure, if you can think as precious, we can compromise. I love that they say compromise. Well, one, I'll get to the first part. The the Pickling gun existed, which was a machine gun. People owned private warships. Uh, sure, they were slaveholders. I'm not going to deny that. Some of these people back then, they, they weren't the greatest people. They weren't the most ethical people. Um, but this, the Second Amendment, like, written into the Constitution, the Constitution is not just a piece of paper. The Constitution was written to, to remind us that uh, these are our natural rights. The natural rights existed before the Constitution. Uh, and then second, with the, with the uh, compromise part, gun owners have actually been compromising since the early 1900s. There's been hundreds and hundreds of laws written from the GCA of 1936, the Gun Control Act of, ni of, of, uh, of 60s, uh, uh, Reagan even wrote in the 86 machine gun ban, the uh, Aubie of 1994, uh, and, and many others. So, and, and, and again, since then, the, uh, the Don Willis comment pretty much reaffirms these things to be, you know, untrue. Back to the, you know, the need part. It has nothing to do with need. It just, you know, just say, you know, people like those things. They're going to buy them. There are millions of AR-15s in America, and they've only been used in crimes, like, as much as I can count on my fingers. So, in fact, machine guns haven't, have only been used, legal machine guns have only been used in two crimes uh, in America, and this was a long time ago. One of those was by a policeman. So, that's all I gotta say about that. Well, Wanna close up. Here's my counter argument, okay? Because now we're fucking into it, and I'm in it to win it. So, to fight your two things of need and the amendment, okay? Don, do you know the Second Amendment, right? Yeah. Could you recite it for me? Of course. 
All right. All right, so. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Now, the first part of that. A well-regulated mil militia, comma, the right of the people to keep and bear arms should not be infringed. It's been already, in fact, uh, we'll probably won't find it because I gotta go, but uh, there is a perfect image and uh, an article attached to this, but that shows grammatically based on the structure of, of English grammar from 1976 up to now and reaffirmed by all, you know, modern grammar, old grammar, uh, and by uh, university professors and whatnot, they have affirmed, they have reaffirmed that that grammatical structure is correct and that they are both separate entities. That the militia is separate from the people and the people are the militia anyway. So they, they, they get each other out. So uh, how it's written, whether it, you know, it'd be arguing semantics at this point, if you just say, um, you either agree with the, with the document and what it's supposed to say and how it's written as a law and how it just it's the law of the land or that it's it's pre-exist constitution whatever you want to say or you can just the only other argument you could really come up with is well you know i don't like it it's just a piece of paper i don't i don't believe in it and that's pretty much all you can say okay so here's my second part of the same argument then uh do you remember what, what's the uh i believe is the 18th amendment all right, well, yeah. Prohibition, baby. Yeah. That didn't yeah. last, did it? No, it did not. It you changed. Can't... Why did it change, sir? It's my turn to talk. Yeah, sure. It's sure. my turn to talk. I, I, it I... changed because the times changed, right? Like, the time changed, new needs came up, and they, they said, like, this law doesn't apply to us anymore. This is something that happens to us a lot, a lot of times during the year. Uh, slavery, voting rights, and everything. Times change, and the document of the Constitution is made to supposed to change with it with the times, right? All right, that's what an amendment does. Change, if we need yeah. it to. Yeah. The amendment doesn't change, it gets amended. Uh, you make an amendment to change a pre-existing uh, amendment. Exactly. And the second amendment is part of the Bill of Rights and the Bill of Rights has not been changed ever. Um, I, it might be in the future, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna deny that, but it is in the, the, the 10 original Bill of Rights. It isn't the 18th, it isn't the 42nd. Um, it's, go it's going to be there for a very long time, uh, and it makes sense to be there because ever since the beginning of dawn of history of man, uh, self-defense is an inherent human right. That's it. That's all I have to say about that. Same here, guys. All right. Well, thank you for coming. That like, I, I like that this was a very civil conversation. You know, we can even go on. I'm not gonna. We're say... probably gonna go get a beer later. Like, yeah. this yeah, is this is just fine. the topic we've been like. We agree to disagree, right? We agree to disagree. There uh, you go. I may convince him. He may convince me of some things. In I future. think he's convinced me once or twice. Yeah. Like it, it changes. Come I get on. bored. Yeah, it's all right. All right. Well, thank you for watching. Jamie, and, signing uh, off. Uh, thank you for a great senior year, man. Appreciate everything you've done for us. Thank you. Cheers.